right, what's up, good people? You are tuned into Fatherhood is Dope, the podcast. Now, remember, Fatherhood is doing our part every day. And because that is the case, I have sitting across from me a gentleman who is doing his part to contribute to the fatherhood movement. His name is Michael Ashford, and he is the creator of Fit Dad Fitness. Okay, so the reason that we're even sitting down right now is because I have been following Michael on on Instagram and for the record he told me I can call him Mike too so yeah I may use Michael or Mike interchangeably and I'll respond to both okay thank you <laughs> so I, I have permission so don't judge me um, but I have been following you on Instagram especially after I saw that you were going to be a speaker at yeah. the dad summit so I was like okay who is this guy and then you walk by and I'm like I think that's Michael let me check him out let me run up to you like while you're on your way to your room <laughs> and i'm like and you responded pretty well so i appreciate it heck yeah man no I'm, oh it's uh it's it's weird getting noticed yeah uh that doesn't happen a lot but when it does it's it's uh hey i'm, I'm all ears so yeah i appreciate it you yeah. received me really really well and like without hesitation yeah you agreed to sit down <laughs> and have this conversation and so i have the privilege of like learning more about you your movement and your contribution to the fatherhood movement like right here on the spot totally i'm yeah. excited about it man okay so let's jump into it um i actually i know a little bit about like why fit dad fitness was like the inception behind it but let's 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 let our listeners in on your motivation and your inspiration behind creating this platform yeah so you know i was i was an athlete growing up in the sense that i was a long distance runner and and i had the body to show for it right i, I was a super skinny guy and i never really thought much about it I, I enjoyed long distance running i was in cross country i did the mile and two mile and track and um you know I'd, i had tried to get into the gym uh my dad actually and my two uncles they're they're bodybuilders and they, wow. they were as i was growing up and they would try to get me into the gym and i would go for maybe a couple weeks but always just fell away from it it wasn't my thing it wasn't i didn't have a reason kind of behind doing it right um, but in 2012, you know, I was working at, at a job that I, I traveled a lot and I was a, a new father at the time. My son was a little over a year old. And, uh, so I was traveling on a business trip to ocean city, Maryland, and I brought my wife and my young son at the time. I now have two kids, but back then it was just my son. I brought them with me. And after work one day, we went out on the beach mm -hmm. and, you know, there I am in my, my trunks and my wife runs ahead of us and she turns around and snaps a picture of me walking on the beach with my, holding my son's hand. And she turns the phone around to me and says, Oh, what a great picture of you guys. I love this. And I, I've always described it as something within me snapped. Yeah. You know, I, men are very visual creatures. Mm -hmm. I, I first saw the fact that I didn't like how I looked. Um, no muscle definition. I, I just looked very thin, you know, really pale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I didn't look healthy, but beyond that, I, I I'm holding my son's hand and the reality of that moment kind of struck me in that I've got a, I've got a family now. It is not just about me and my wife even, or just me, but it is about, I've got a family who is expecting me to provide for them, to be there for them, to be involved and present in their lives as much as, as they and mine. And I just said, I'm not doing everything that I can to make sure that I'm there for my family, for my son, for as long as I possibly can affect. I know <laughs> fate may have different plans for me, but I'm not doing everything that I can in this moment at this time. And so we got back from that, um, that work trip and I joined a gym. Uh, I started going six days a week. Wow. I went all out with it, man. And uh, over the next several years, I went about completely morphing my body, my lifestyle, my health, how I paid attention to my nutrition, my cardiovascular fitness, just a whole total body health and fitness, you know, packing on 30 pounds of muscle um, in that time and, and really just transforming myself from the inside out using fitness as as that foundation and beyond that once i kind of got down down that path once you get into fitness you know the kind of the cliche as well everybody who gets into fitness eventually wants to start a gym or something mm -hmm. like that well uh i i thought at one time that was going to be the plan but I, I did so i did get certified as a personal trainer but um i i have always just had this heart for families 
and for fathers being active and involved and around. And, you know, so after I got certified as a personal trainer, I, I, I thought, you know, I want to do something to, to make sure that men, that, that fathers are involved in their ch- kids' lives for as long as they possibly can affect, much like that moment I had standing on the beach. And that's where Fit Dad Fitness came from, is I think fitness can be the foundation for fathers living active, involved, healthy lives with their kids. That's solid. So, yeah. you know, what's really interesting is I just think about the duality of <clears throat> how your wife perceived you, your son, yeah. in that moment on the beach. And, you know, the I guess based on your description, like this contentment and even joy she had of mm-hmm. like seeing her husband and, and, and your son holding hands, great moment for her. Yeah. And for you, you're not even able to like receive that moment as a great picture moment or like I'm on this beach with my son and my wife. And, you know, it was, I guess, the, as you would describe it, the, the turning point for you, something snapped. Mm-hmm. I do want to know how um, how your family responded to like this paradigm shift that you had. And I'm assuming that you made it known like, yeah. Hey, hey, honey, what's your wife's name? Kim. Hey, Kim. I'm not happy. (laughs) I'm not happy. I still have my cross-country, long-distance body. And side note, I ran cross-country, too. And I ran the – and my wife hates the fact that um, I tell people I ran the 200 um, (laughs) because she just doesn't believe me. But I did. (laughs) But my main race was the 400 and the 800. I ran the 800 as well. Yeah. Yeah. And um, honestly, when I ran in high school, I did – I love to run. I hated the 800 and the 1600. Yeah. Now, as a 32-year-old, like it's like it's what I live for. Sure. Um, so I wish I had this attitude and this <laughs> mindset back then, <laughs> like <laughs> just aggressively attacking the the 1600 and the 800, like my coach always wanted me to. But yep. you know, I think honestly, I'm a better runner now. That's awesome. Sidetrack. All right, but you know, so but back to the point. Like, how how did your family or your your wife specifically react to like this this shift? Like, babe, Kim, I've got to get it together. Yeah, um, because that's a that's a huge commitment that you just described. You said you went really hard going into the gym. You said six days a week. Six days a week. Yeah, yeah that's a real commitment. Hundred percent. And with a wife and a son, that's not a commitment that only you um, experience. Yeah. So how was that experience for your family dynamic? Well, I, I think one really important thing was I, I, in the conversations that I had with my wife, two things. I wanted to bring her along with me. Um, so I didn't want to just make this about me and my health. But um, I, I, she signed, I signed her up for a gym membership as well and, and talked to her about it and say, hey, do you want to do this? Because I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this thing. I'm going to make this right in, in my own mind, in my own head for, for you guys, for you and, and Luke, our son. And I said, I'd, I'd love for you to be a part of this. And so she joined the gym as well. So it was something that we could experience together. That's awesome. Um, but beyond that, I also made the commitment to her, like, this will not take away from my family time. This will not take away from the time that I spend with you, with Luke. And so, you know, I made sacrifices in other areas, and I told her that I would. I would go to bed a little bit earlier. Um, I would stop watching TV at night. I would wake up earlier in the morning because when everybody else is asleep, I can get to the gym and do my thing. And at the time, then be home and ready to get our son up and ready and ready for the day and and out to daycare. So I was still going to be the involved dad the gym was not going to be my life, but I cut away from other things that were no longer going to be a priority for me to focus on the thing that was the priority or the, the couple things that were the priority for me. So, you know, I had those conversations with her and, and that's so important for us as, as guys is when we have a passion that we're, we're invested in or that we want to we wanna pursue you know, as much as we can bring our spouse along with us on that journey, involve them in some way. Maybe it's not their, my wife never up until that point, she wasn't going to the gym with me, obviously, but it was something that we could share in that same experience. And so, um, she was great with it and, and she understood my reasoning why, I mean, obviously 
obviously I wanted to change how my body looked. Mm -hmm. I didn't like how my body looked. I was, and it was a, it, there was a visual reaction to that, but she understood the deeper meaning or the deeper reason why that I wanted to do this. And, um, you know, it was, it was all for my family, for her and for my son. And, you know, how could she not be supportive of that? She a hundred percent was. Yeah, I realize that in, in certain situations that my wife and I have like dealt with this well, <clears throat> particularly when you get this like great idea that is really good for yeah. you. So whether it's a vision, whether it's about a business or your health, and we just want to take off with it. And it's not that my wife wants to say, you know, I can, I can use your situation. It's not that she necessarily wants to be at the gym too, mm -hmm. but a lot of times we get these bright ideas and we never invite them into the process yeah. because what it may look like for her, if you're going to the gym and you have this desired body uh, or, or outcome, uh, then there's other changes that take place in the house, even around maybe meal prepping or how you all eat or what you eat. Oh yeah. And you have to include her on that. Mm -hmm. um, because when you talk about going to bed early, like my wife and I, I couldn't make that decision outside of her because some of our quality time has to deal with has to deal with you know watching TV. Yeah. Some of our you know we are Survivor and Big Brother fans, <laughs> and you know I don't even know if the Amazing Race still comes on, but you know we we like to <laughs> yeah. watch the, those competition shows and they come on between like seven and eight or yeah. eight and nine. So. Yeah, that's a huge commitment, and I'm glad that you brought that perspective to the table about when we have these type of endeavors to make sure that we include our spouses on it. Um, I, I want to know how the, the platform has, how folks have responded to the platform um, once you got it started. Like, how did you find your audience outside of... You're not from Minnesota. You're from Denver, Denver, Cle yeah. Denver, Cle Denver Colorado, <laughs> Cleveland, Minnesota, <laughs> Minneapolis, everywhere. <laughs> no, but you're originally from Kansas, Kansas City, yeah, Kansas City, yeah. But I mean, how do you think? Uh, um, how do you think your base has grown beyond you know the hometown? Like, how are people responding to what you're doing around fit dads? The response has been. Um, amazing and you know one of the things that i i didn't do when i started fit dad fitness was leverage any any previous like social uh, capital quote unquote that i had you started from scratch i started from scratch wow. and uh you know my my professional full-time job helps with that uh, so i'm a marketing director <laughs> at a software company full-time so, so did you you leverage those those I, skills? I, I yeah, I leveraged those skills. I applied what I was doing in my full time day job to you know what I wanted to do as kind of uh, I guess I'll call it as my side hustle at this point. And so you know building a social media fo profile, creating content, putting out um, stuff that brings value to people without asking for anything in return. Um, all of those things that you do in building a a brand for a quote unquote business, I was applying to the same thing with Fit Dad Fitness. And, and originally I wasn't doing anything to monetize whatsoever. Um, I, I, I was a certified personal trainer and, and just as a side note, I got certified as a personal trainer with my wife. So she absolutely is on that journey with wow. me even, even today. And, um, you know, there was no immediate monetization of it. It was just, I want to create a platform that gets this message out there of fathers being active, involved, and healthy with their children. And that's, that's physically involved, that's mentally involved, that's emotionally involved, that, that is uh, across the board. And, and I think fitness can be the foundation for that. So, you know, Instagram, I used, I, I used, I still to this day, I use 30 hashtags on every single post to try and leverage the searchability of that platform. Um, very early on, I followed everyone uh, to make sure that, you know, just that follow, follow, follow for follow culture on Instagram or on Twitter, um, on Facebook, it, it's, you know, Facebook is, a, is an up and down platform for me. I don't love it, but it's there. And I kind of had to have that presence and we've got a squeaky door in the background. That's yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I should have prefaced this interview by saying that we are recording in uh, somewhere in a hotel. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. This is like a lunch space, but, 
uh, you know, folks are coming in. Maybe he's getting ready for dinner or something. Maybe but so. yeah, <laughs> but we still got time on the clock. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so, but you you're talking about just the platforms and the yeah. follow for follow, yeah. which is an interesting concept because it's something that I I, I, I have to deal with myself. You know, try to mm -hmm. f figuring out what is the strategy to growing your platform. And so, were you getting that that these things were working for you? Yeah. Or so they were. Yeah, they absolutely were. And and another huge thing that takes a lot of time, but I, I invested the effort in doing it was those main hashtags that I wanted to be involved with. Fit dad, uh, dad bod, dad life, fatherhood. I would click into those and like and comment on other people's posts myself and just get involved in conversations on other people's posts and and drive traffic that way you know i would be blogging i blogged back then quite a bit more than i did now because i needed the content to serve out on social media um and it, it from there it just kind of built into okay what how can i create an entire content platform that no matter where somebody is is perhaps looking or, or doing where they're at the most in terms of looking for content, um, that, that they can find me. And so, of course, all the social platforms. I started creating eBooks and, and downloadable workout guides that people can download for free on my site and blogging. I started reaching out to people to do interviews because I, like you, and, and uh, educated in mass communications and journalism. I was a, a sports writer. And so I would produce these long form blogs on yeah. my site that were interviews with just people in the fitness space that I reached out to. And that's amazing. That's the amazing thing about um, social media that still amazes me today is how receptive really big, I guess, influencers are on mm -hmm. these platforms. Yeah. I mean, the, the majority of my podcast guests for the Fit Dad Fitness podcast have come through Instagram DMs. Wow. And I've, I've just DM'd everyone. Uh, no holds back. I just, I would DM, as much as I would DM Steve Weatherford and, and everything that he's got going on, I would DM, you know, just some random guy that I saw his content and I liked it and I wanted his message to be on my podcast. So I wonder uh, if it's the same impact that we have, yeah. even, you know, in an environment like this where we understand the community yeah. that we are a part of. Right. So, you know, from one dad blogger to the next, from one dad podcaster <laughs> to the next, it's like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You don't even really have to sell me. I get it. I know what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I know the type of effort that it takes to make content. Let's do it. I think you're a decent guy. <laughs> you know, I like what you stand for. And let's just, let's make the content. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if that's like the same type of response that people were receiving from you. Because I mean, when even when I look at your page, particularly on Instagram, like it's received really well. And I was looking at the page, it's just a sidebar. And I was thinking, I want to get on his page. You're like <laughs> I said, and I was actually thinking, I said, I need to like, I need to get it together where I can take a <laughs> no shirt picture and have it posted on your Instagram page. So I'll be working on my summer body. So, hey, so fatherhood is free. Be I've got free workout guides on my website. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, well, first of all, I think that you've hit on something really good. I mean, you kind of you went deep into this perspective, and I think some of our dads can listen to this and pick up a few notes that you are really alluding to a couple of things like one that they are space for all of us yeah and that two like the strategies that you laid out around like what you did to even just grow the platform outside of so here's what my heart is here's what what my my passion is and now here are strategies that i can implement to make sure that my message is not falling on deaf ears mm -hmm. and i think that that's like a lot of times, you know, folks are kind of hard pressed to either share that type of information. Yeah. Um, and other times folks just don't feel like that. Hey, if I approach you, can you share with me your strategy as to how I grow my platform as well? So I thought that was really good. Um, I've got no secrets, man. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good for us and especially good for Kim and Luke. And yeah. what's your, uh, you have another. And then son. I have a daughter who's, her? her name's Alexandra. Alexandra. Yeah. How old is she? She's six. She's six. And Luke is eight. Got it. Yeah. So, I mean, what's what's the, 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 the long-term goal for 
the platform, I mean, what it is, it, could you see, do you see the platform as a, dare I call it, a, an exit strategy? Um, yeah, I was just uh, at the at the mixer uh, earlier. I was talking with a couple of guys about that, and I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not if if it becomes a, a thing where, gosh, my podcast is is bringing in money, and and uh, you know I've got I, I do coach people one on one, and and I have a membership site as well. Um, you know, thing ways that I've monetized since then. But um, you know, if it ever got to that point, I, I can't say that I would say no to it. But at the same time, um, I, I love that it is my passion project right now. Yep. Um, and, and, I, and I love working. I love my full-time job. Yep. Uh, you know, in, in growing companies from a, from a marketing perspective and a growth marketer mindset, that's really fun to me. And I love building teams and leading teams and, and creating companies that are built for the long haul. Um, that's what I do in my, my full-time job. And, and I love that. And have uh, have been really fortunate to have some amazing uh, jobs and some at some amazing companies and so I, I like the idea maybe this is a little bit I- idealistic but I like the idea that this is a passion project that I can just do with it what I want and not have the outcome riding on anything yep. you know so because then the result can start to look different exactly the so not that this is not stress or or it can be some pressure because you have personal goals even within your passion project that you want to meet for yourself Mm -hmm. for your own satisfaction but then you start to get other elements involved and it just turns into something that it was never supposed to be yeah and you know you hear authenticity thrown around a lot Mm -hmm. and and that i i want to be as authentic with my audience as possible so you see you know my my videos on my instagram are terrible quality (laughs) i mean there there usually it is my my phone propped up against my water bottle at the gym maybe on a bench while i do some sort of exercise but oh but that works it does it does but and i i would never want to ever feel pressured to make it anything more than that got it you know got it yeah and and at the point where it becomes my job yeah the circumstances change the stakes get a lot higher and and you're you're constantly feeling pulled in a direction that maybe you don't you never intended to go in the first place you really don't know how much that is helping me right now (laughs) that is that is a great perspective because sometimes I feel like when I'm just going to speak for myself you know even as a creative when you you have this vision so I have a vision for even my fatherhood platform and that vision is crystallizing and sometimes when you have a vision and it's becoming clear you think that oh my goodness I should just forsake everything else I have going on and just go over here and like just grow this vision and sometimes you know sometimes you can only see things in part first of all and other times like you know this platform could just be meant to be a great hobby a great outlet that brings balance to your life that enables you to be a healthier father because you get your creative outlet and you still have you know, a job that you actually enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not speaking to like the listeners who may be in just a horrible situation and they can parlay their skill set and their passion to an actual lifestyle. So I really appreciate you saying you, you saying that because it actually gives me perspective like in the right now. Yeah. Um, just before we get out of here, let's talk a little bit about like Luke and Alexandra. Yeah. Alexandra, right? You did. You got it right. Okay. I'm on it. Luke, (laughs) Alexandra, Kim, Michael, Mike, (laughs) Ashford. Ashford. (laughs) Um, but no. So how, how is it like the, the actual like time you, you get to be present with your kids? Cause you talked a lot about, um, basically protecting that family time. You, you speak a lot. Okay, we got another visitor in the room, but we're going to keep it going. <laughs> um, are you about to vacuum? Yeah. Can you give us like three minutes? It w- we'll be done in three minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so you talk a lot about like safeguarding like your family time. And so, you know, all podcast aside social media platform aside i just want to tap into like just the essence of your fatherhood Mm -hmm. and one of the reasons is because you know what fatherhood is dope fatherhood is dope stands for is fathers doing our part (sighs) 
<laughs> this is about to be a huge section that I just go ahead and edit out. Or I may just leave it. No, I'll leave it, man. To express my irritation with this Authent- door opening and closing. <laughs> right. This is my water bottle. This is my phone <laughs> stacked up stacked against up the water against- bottle in the gym. This is your moment. <laughs> yeah, this is my moment. All right. So let me just get back to it. So just... <laughs> The, so fatherhood is dope. Yeah. You know, the, one of the reasons that I do this platform is because I want to celebrate men who have answered the call to fatherhood. Totally. And so many men, they forfeit their position and not um, for one reason or another. But there are so many men like you and I who have answered the call to fatherhood in the sense of even just, you know, being present in the lives of our children. Mm-hmm. But we've also elevated that by you know, creating platforms that would move the fatherhood agenda down the field. And it's just, and by agenda, I mean like showing men that it is okay, that you can do it. You can remain present in the lives of your kids. You don't have to forfeit all of your dreams and goals and aspirations. So that's what this platform is about. But just to take a step back, I just want to hear just a little bit about, you know, what brings you the most joy in the actual presence of your kids, your family. What brings me the most joy, man. Um, Any time that I see my kids modeling the behavior that I have, have hoped to set as the example for them. You know, when, when, my, when my son opens the door for somebody as we're going into the gym and he's, he stands there and waits for 10 people to go through the door and he's holding them and saying hi to them, um, to every single person who, who comes by. Uh, I, my heart swells with pride in that. I find joy in that, man. Um, you know, we we just we've been looking for a new church, and so we've we've put we've taken to our our kids to so many different churches, and we finally found one. But at every church, you know, somebody would come up to us and and say hi to my wife and I, and then say, "Oh, hi, Luke. Hi, Alexandra." And my son would shake their hand, and they would say, "How are you today?" And instead of just saying "good," he would say, "I'm good. How are you?" Awesome. And relating to somebody, and just again, demonstrating the behavior that you, as the father, should be modeling to them as the example that you are setting as the head of the household. Um, you know, I, I, I'll go off on a little bit of a tangent here, and hopefully, hopefully, we've I got know. Time you here. know, I'm thinking like <laughs> that guy is coming back with this vacuum cleaner any moment. But, um, you know, I, 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 the, the most important relationship in the home, man, is between husband and wife. And every example that you can set there for your children, for your son on how a man treats a woman, treats a woman in his life that he, he has professed his love for, that he will stand behind, that he will, he will protect and guard in sickness and in health and good times and in bad, that example that you as a husband set in modeling that behavior for your children, uh, for your son, will be the example that he lives by, that he, he lives his life by into his adult life. Same with your daughter. For the example that you set on how a man should treat a woman, what she should expect of a man, how, how to demonstrate love in a healthy way, how, to, uh, how a man is of service to his bride, she is going to use that as the foundation, as the model for every male interaction that she has for her entire life. You are your son's superhero and your daughter's first love. And you, as a father, you cannot discount the weight that, that, that you bring to the situation when you model that behavior to your wife. And so my joy comes out of seeing my kids be that, like I've said, be, demonstrate that, that example that I've been trying to set for them. When my daughter um, at, the, at the playground, she hears another kid fall down and get hurt, and she stops what she's doing and runs over and helps that little kid. You know, my heart just swells. It goes up into the clouds, man, because that is, that's what I have tried to not only directly one-on-one teach them, but that's the behavior that I try to model for them. And that is a father's role. That is a father's role in his children's life is to be there not only physically, but as I said before, the emotional, the uh, mental example that you set for them, man. It's just, um, there's nothing like it. There's absolutely nothing like it. Dude, first of all, you are such a class act. You know, I'm just (laughs) sitting across from you. I'm looking you in your eye and I'm like, 
you are a great <laughs> father. You're a great dad. And yeah, I'm thinking about Luke and so Alexander. Much. Alexandra, if they have you asking as an example, like my daughter, her name is Journey, and um, Journey is Beautiful two. Name. And thank you. And you know, Teresa and I, like th- these are the type of families and kids that we want Journey to be around as well, because Journey has a special heart as well. Yeah. And um, you know, sometimes. I'm just, I'm like, Teresa, there's no way we can take credit for it. I mean, like, we're good parents, but, like, <laughs> she's really special like that, yeah. too. You know, like, if a kid falls, she's going to, even at two, she's going to run over and help and just do things like that. And so you just want her to be around good company, even at the tender age of two. How old are your children? My son is eight, and mm-hmm. my daughter just turned six. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. But yeah. so even just that type of mindset, like, I just wish that all people can like (laughs) all kids could grow up with you know just being that awesome that that helpful um but that shows you the importance of having like a present father yeah um and a a dad who is fathering with intentionality Mm -hmm. and that's what i mean when i say answering the call to fatherhood you know it looks different for a lot of folks but at the end of the day the call to fatherhood is an intentional step And based on what I just heard you say, you have taken that intentional step to father your children, both you and Kim. But this is fatherhood. It is dope. (laughs) So we're just going to brag on you and celebrate you. Oh, man, I appreciate it so much. Yeah. You know, it's and it carries over into every relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, how your kids see you treat the waiter at a restaurant um, and how you speak to them, how you respond to a stranger on the street if you happen to bump into them. It's just... um, Man, you're absolutely, I love that intentionality of fatherhood is, uh, you know, more men need it. Yeah. So well, I, I love that you're kind of spreading that message man, yep. because that is, that's powerful. But guess what? You, we are in this together. 100%. So, you know, you get to help me spread this message. And so I'm right there with are you. The, so do the other dads who, you know, we will engage with. So yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah, man. Our time has come to an end and the guy has given us the room for like, he hadn't come back banging up stuff. Um, but really quick, just tell, tell everybody where they can find you, where you want them to go. Anything else you want them to know before we sign out of here? Uh, man, fitdadfitness.com is the hub of everything. Uh, Instagram and Twitter is Fit, at Fit Dad Fitness. Facebook is at Fit Dad Fitness page. And then, of course, the Fit Dad Fitness podcast. And uh, I absolutely love that. That is that is so much fun to do that podcast. I'm sure you're you're figuring that out as yes. well. And um, I guess real quick, I, I'm working on a book right now as well that I hope to knock on wood have done this year. Been writing it for about a year and a half. It's called The Involved Man: A Call for Men to Step Up and Fight for the Relationships That Matter Most. Oh my goodness! And uh, so one of these days, I will get that published and released. But I'm really excited about that, man. Oh, I'm going to be following you. We will need to just. <laughs> keep talking off the record because i really like what you stand for and you know you can only get so much from someone from their social media platform um but just sitting across from you like i said and just really hearing the heart of this man the heart of a father and a a great husband right kim um (laughs) yeah let's just we'll be keeping up with each other absolutely we're gonna have to have you on the fit dad fitness podcast oh you know i am for it so sure all right so you have been listening to fatherhood is dope the podcast i am your host aaron mcgee if you like what you have been hearing please please share the podcast with other dads other men Um, And just anybody who can benefit from this content. And also, don't forget to subscribe wherever podcasts are available. Fatherhood is dope. Peace.